Hello humans of Earth. Welcome to the second episode of New Earth Wisdom Walks. I have here a very special human being that I uh, <laughs> that I unexpectedly bumped into yesterday while climbing some boulders. Walking on the, What's the your, slack line. Yeah, the slack line's magic. Yeah. What's your name? Hello, my name is Mika Schneider Ooh. and I'm currently 21 Hello. and I'm visiting the city. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about your roots. Um, I am French and Japanese. I was born in Paris. And I've lived in Tokyo, um, other parts of France, Russia, and India. And I'm currently based in Paris. Nice. What's your favorite place that you've visited? Ooh, that I've visited must be. Ah, uh, that's a really hot question. Actually, I can't really. I liked every spot that I've been to because they were really special, and on different timings in my life nice yeah choose. let's uh let's speak about your upbringing how was it like growing up where did you grow up like where were you born so i was born in the 13th arrondissement in paris oh okay yeah. and i left paris when i was two to move to tokyo and i was there for four years so until when I was like six, mm -hmm. until I turned six, I was in Tokyo basically, and I was in this big city. Um, but it's part of my life, you know. I consider myself being a patchwork because I've lived in all these countries, four years maximum each, right. and that's like, yeah, that's what I am right now. What I am now. What are you now? Being. What kind of being? What did it? What, what What does being mean to you? Well, we're gonna get super deep. Yeah, like we're like super really, shallow, and now we're gonna get super well, deep. Well, already. Um, well, my physical form right. is not completed. It's like I change every day. You know, the way I dress. The way I come to people, the way I present myself to people changes every day. Uh -huh. So I have this core, which is me, which is my way of speaking, which is my value, uh, which are, I guess, my karma and, you know, the core, like, what, what's a core for you? Like a core, you know, I have this. Like your center point? Yeah, kind of. But even my setup point changes because I live in a suitcase right now, so it's like if you're talking center point, like where you settle, yeah. it's like not really that. It's it's more values, and my physical form just is this what you see. Yes. And yeah, also being mixed, it's kind of hard to like tell where I'm from. Like, what was your guess when you saw me? I thought you were some sort of. Chinese. Okay. <laughs> why, you, why do you laugh? Because that sounds like a lot of things I've heard before. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's normal. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're Asian, you know it. Yeah, right? for it's sure. <laughs> but I, I get no offense from it. You know? No, no. Not I anymore. like that people guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, so talking about living out of a suitcase, like. Like, what? What have you learned from living this type of lifestyle? <laughs> well, it had teach me to be more minimalist, uh, like a minimalist, to be lighter, yeah. to save some space for things I can bring back, but also to give and take things from people I meet during the trip. Like I would bring, I bring things from Japan that I got December to New York to like eventually give them to people here. Mm -hmm. and I'm buying things here to like bring it in France and maybe share it with others. So being light, uh, being able to share. Um, I saw 
someone that loves routine and like having a selling point right. also to let go to be like well i could crash whenever and that's okay like what is the worst that can happen if i have myself mm. so you know a suitcase is just a suitcase some airline companies like lost my suitcase so i feel like it's a materialistic thing right. that makes me let go of things too so it's basically my life in the suitcase but also like if i just keep the essential things on me like mm -hmm. passport keys and all that the rest is just i can get more clothes like thrifting here or whatever so yeah so what are the key key elements of your suitcase that you really like out of all the things in your suitcase what what's like the prized possession so what i always carry you mean like yeah just like what's the most valuable value, in the suitcase yeah, okay. well one cream that does it all i use the avens you get fat like you can put on your foot on your face Foot and your face? Yeah, I mean oh, it's, it's oh, a face it's like, cream that it's goes just... on the foot too. It's not a foot cream oh, that goes okay. on your face, you know that? Yeah, it's... that way. So it's like versatile. Yeah, it's versatile. Nice. Um, a few underwear, like not necessarily a lot, but that I, I can wash. Right. So, yeah. Uh, you you really invest in your underwear. Well, I. I don't, I wouldn't say I invest in my yeah. underwear, but I pay attention on the material. Nice, what used. material? Organic cotton, Ooh. Uh, for socks, merino wool. Yes. Yeah, but mostly like cotton and natural Fibers. material. Yeah. Right. And what do I have else in my suitcase? I would say jewelry, but no, I just have this necklace that I always have, which is a family necklace. Uh-huh. Um, rose water. <laughs> nice. Where you go on my skin. I like just skincare and underwear and the rest. Oh, um, okay, maybe some nice, comfortable, durable pants, right. like black, nudie jeans, mm. organic cotton pants, and a nice wool or cashmere. Sweater. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh. We're gonna get even deeper now. Wait, I now that something. the wind's blowing harder. What? What did you forget? I forgot something. Uh, tea. Ooh, I always you always with bring tea. tea. Yeah. I why? Either... Why? What's your connection to tea? Wow. Okay. So I'm quite picky on my tea, being Japanese, and right. I just drink it straight with like just hot water. So it has to be good. Uh -huh. So either I carry. Chinese like traditional medicine that is almost like tea right. because it's powder or I just bring my usual like herbal tea that has no caffeine in it and it makes me feel like I'm home because that's usually what I sip in my own mug cup when I'm back home. Nice. Yeah. That's all. Okay, ready to go deeper? Oh yeah. Alright, so what's uh What's your mindfulness practice? I know you're in environments where there's a lot of chaos and there's, yeah, like uh, it's quite chaotic in the fashion industry. How do you, what are your tips and tricks on, on staying present and mindful? Okay, so I would say I like taking some time before leaving the house right. so I don't wake up like five minutes before leaving I wake up I give myself maybe 20 minutes to do my yoga or meditation or both but I take this time to be mindful and breathe mm. just, like breath work yes um, I don't touch my phone before leaving my house I mean maybe five minutes before leaving my house mm -hmm. that's why I don't have I don't wake up with my phone and I have an alarm so I just separate these both devices. So yeah, just mindful, not scrolling. Um, what do I do? I don't drink coffee first thing in the morning because that's like really stressful. Um, but you drink coffee? I do drink coffee, yeah. What's your favorite type of coffee? Black coffee. I like cold brew in the summer, but like... Oh, you mean like 
The variety or yeah. like... Uh, anything, the way it's actually, prepared. Oh, drip. Okay. A nice like V60. V60 or oat milk cappuccino. That's okay. like my go-to. Um, but I was not a coffee drinker. Like I started two years ago. So yeah. Nice. Wow. But being mindful. You always like, always been drinking green huh? tea. Sorry. Um, being mindful. Yeah. That's like let's. Yeah. So let's go deeper. Okay. Let's go like deep with that. The like, mindfulness uh, is so important. Like we started this day with a beautiful bagua practice that was an hour long outside in this park and we had just met yesterday and we all we did it like guys we did it like this practice was so beautiful so this kind of practices coming back to your breath um, kind of putting yourself in this bubble and not leaving the house until I'm ready not leaving my hotel room or the house whenever like wherever I'm shooting uh, whatever it's yeah just ask myself if I'm ready to do it and then do it mm. otherwise you're like the day starts without you being ready so it kind of like attacks you you know you're like oh, oh. so how you do you know when wait. you're ready to leave I ask myself it's a feeling like if my breath is steady okay and if I'm happy with myself at that moment enough you know if I feel rested or if not if I feel calm enough to like fight the world <laughs> and, uh, with, with love and with peace. love and with like how do you say forgiveness yes. acceptance um, the third eye open just leave the door open for like new people and things to happen Nice. Yeah. So talking about the breath. So I'm just gonna be extracting different things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So talking about your breath, uh, do you have any breathing techniques that you'd like to share with the world? Oh yeah, the alternate nostril one. Okay. But I just did like All right. I did it like yesterday. Can we See? do it while we walk? Ooh, I don't know if it's a walking thing, but I can show you. Okay, like, show 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 everyone. So you're using your ring finger and right. your thumb, right? So you close one nostril and you inhale by the one that's open mm -hmm. for four, like. Then you block the two nostrils for eight. And then you exhale by the other nostril for eight. Then you do four by the same nostril you exhaled from. Block for eight, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale for eight. So that's a really good way to like remember that you have two nostrils <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> You might be breathing but only using one nostril so that's a good way to like flow it like this nice. can you feel it like the yes. flow literally that goes like this mm. goes like this and then becomes a triangle so right it's a it's a prana uh, practice technique, technique that nice. i usually do at the end of my yoga practice yes and when I do it for like a few minutes, I'm really calm mm -hmm. and I can see clearly like I'm, you know, my mind is clearer, so. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Do you have any? Do you have uh, any? I have a few. Um, I like, I like just uh, closing my eyes sometimes and like just focusing on my breath. Like oh, a, so lot, yeah. a lot of people. Oh yeah, that's an easy one. Mm -hmm, that's a lot an of, easy one. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> A lot of people think meditation and like being mindful is like something that's like super complex and like has like a, a bunch of rules um, but I think like the easiest things to do are like the most powerful things to do yeah no that's I mean that one was so easy that I didn't even mention it but yes <laughs> just close your eyes and breathe and remember that 
you know, you're doing it like unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So just breathe, being conscious and feel the good air, you know, like Deep taste breaths. the air. Deep taste breath. the air. Cleansing breath. Mm. Cleansing breath. Um, so you allow yourself to open your your chest and in your lungs. Mm. Expand. You know, you're like we're organic matters. Like we need the air, we need the water, we need these elements. Yes. We need to for the photosynthesis. Yes. <laughs> we need the We need photosynthesis. We need all the elements, you know, like right. we need you wanna walk this way actually. Yeah. We do need all the elements and uh I'm glad that you're aware of this. Yeah, I have to, you know, like I have to breathe before going down the runway. I have to breathe before mm. responding to some people. I have to like <laughs> Yeah, just not act you know when you're like angry or something just not act right when you're angry like take the time to like come back to yourself observe the situation and one of the biggest things to do there is to breathe and just be like wow okay what can i do you know i almost got angry but i'm not getting angry because this person doesn't deserve all the anger i had all the day and like just you know put it right into her face like no just this is kindness too you know you know when you're angry and you're like you just snap at someone and all the anger just comes all at once well breathing is like breathing prevents that yeah yes. to me i i agree it gives you a chance to reevaluate your your reaction yes and also when you when you speak you're breathing you know like yes. you know when you have to sing and they, they tell you like to kind of like sing from the belly mm -hmm. you know it's like from your diaphragm the air. yeah the air mm -hmm. it's like it's breast work at this point if you're done like theater mm -hmm. uh, singing and all that it's a lot about breathing techniques right so if it's, you wanna it's funny they don't teach sorry to interrupt no, but it's, it's funny fine. they don't teach you this in the do they teach you this at your agency or or no, do any really. fashion yo fashion designers y'all need to invest on a really great breathing instructor to teach your models how to breathe properly walking lessons are important Ooh, okay. i took some walking lessons i mean I didn't take walking lessons, but I practiced my walking. But my breathing, I practiced it without being told, you know. Like, I was told to, like, maybe, you know, practice my walk and try it again and again. Breathing, I did it because I knew it was benefiting me. Mm. And because sometimes I just had to breathe. <laughs> at work, at parties, just come back to my breath. And now that I see the impact it has on oxygenating my brain, uh, everything, my skin and all that, I just do it. And <laughs> I was almost gonna say I can't go without breathing, but that's like so stupid to say. <laughs> like, okay. As an organic human being, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's so, no, it's forgotten. That's what I mean. You know, it's like the breathing is forgotten. Right. I think everyone's born knowing and contains the wisdom and inside them to know how to breathe mm. like life just teaches us a different way of breathing i guess even through like the media we watch you know like it's all it all has like these small little subtle effects on us in the way we breathe yeah. in the way we feel in the way we see do you mean like big news that prevents yeah. us from just like stimuli big news yeah the for sure. over when you get overwhelmed you don't mm. go deep in your breath you exactly. mean when it's like overstimulation you're like yes. shallow breath but that's like almost normal like you're in kind of survival mode or like ready to fight mode so you're like ready to jump anytime but that's like also <laughs> that's another big topic it's like the medias and the amount of information we take in so you know it's like in these times where medias are everywhere information is everywhere which is an amazing thing you have to also like stay centered and like kind of how do you say um hold your ground 
hold your ground and choose what to take in like right. just keep an ear like that listens mm -hmm. but like what you take in actually is like your choice yes but always listen to others you know like keep just an ear there and you see what you do with that information mm -hmm. yeah So, I, I'm aware that uh, you travel often. How, uh, like, how, how do you, like, do you have a technique of, like, finding the right places to go to when you travel? Because, like, bumping into you at the climbing gym was kind of, like, um, I kind of wonder, like, how did you come up with this idea? to go to a climbing gym in the city that you're working in? Well, I had a few days off, so I wanted to uh, invest in my body. Right. And be so healthy. So you, you invest in your body often through yes. like activities like this? Yes, nice. I think it's really important. Um, I mean, it's your vessel. Right. So get some massages, um, work out you don't necessarily have to like spend money but like spend time mm -hmm. in working out and it will just show you know like i do find myself unhappy when i'm not moving enough right and also like oh, what's wrong it's fine yeah. yeah okay um i do find myself unhappy when i don't move enough um, I love dancing and all that, so I do invest time in actually playing music and dancing. I do invest money in going to gym, you know, getting that day pass uh, at the... But I knew I was gonna meet people there, like, usually right. people who climb, they're really chill, they're here to help, so even if I go on my own there, I knew that if I struggle, someone will help me. Mm. So... Um, Speaking of climbing... Talk, talking about climbing, we are, we're a little off-road over here. That's good. Um, well, when did you start climbing? Um, a year ago, I would say. Yeah, how were you introduced to this activity? Um, so, I was dating uh, a boy who mm -hmm. was into it, and I tried it, and it was good. Oh wait, no, actually I did some climbing in middle school, but it Ooh. was like with ropes right. when I was Top in roping. Moscow. Mm -hmm. And we just had a wall in our like school and I was scared of heights. Right. So I did a bit of that because I was kind of forced to. Mm. And then I went back like a year ago with uh, my uh, ex-boyfriend and I wanted to um, fight this like, you know, I was scared of heights, so I wanted to fight that by actually going climbing, you know, like, I'm scared of needles, I'm doing acupuncture, I'm scared of heights, <laughs> I'm climbing, uh, how do you call it? Exposure? Exposure therapy? Exposure therapy, well, I think I was doing that, like, wow. I didn't even know that word before, mm -hmm. you just, yeah. That's awesome, just do it. nice Mika. What's your, uh... What's your spirituality practice? Let's talk about spirituality now. Wow, okay. So, I come from a family that is not religious, I would say. I mean, part of my father family is Christian. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, but we don't really practice, we don't go to the church. So, I would say I'm a spiritual person okay. in a way that I like meditating, I like doing yoga, but I don't approach it uh, in a religious way. Mm. Mm. So how do you, like, what's your spiritual, like, what's your spiritual practice with life? Like, what's, how do you, mm. what are kind of like, like ways of being that you've, you've developed over time here on earth? Um, being kinds you know that's right. what attracts me in one person is kindness mm -hmm. at the end of the day you know look no matter how attractive the person is it's mm -hmm. like when you're not kind enough it's like i can't <laughs> like i can't just hang with a person that is not showing the same value yes um but yeah just kindness uh being open-minded and i think that 
traveling a lot has helped me being open-minded because I saw so many things when I was in India that was quite harsh for me mm -hmm. because it was so different from Europe and all. Yeah, like, what are the things you've learned in India, your wow. time in India? Uh -huh. So happy to be able to speak about that <laughs> because, well, it was a hard experience when I was 16 and I was told Ooh, like, wow. Yeah, my dad was like, yo, we're going to India next year. And I was like, oh, we're moving again because I was a family of expat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, we're moving again. And in India, you know how they treat women there? And I, and I had so much like, um, how do you say? Like, I, I had no idea of what was going in India and still had this idea. You're exposed and to another way. Yeah, I had all <sighs> this like, I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I went there like actually the day after New Year's mm -hmm. on that year I visited some apartment in India but like just after my New Year's party like we took the plane and it, like I was kind of forced to go there right and I was like my dad was like this is gonna be your school and maybe this is gonna be your house and we're visiting houses and all that and I was just sitting here like I don't want to be here like so like close you know like <laughs> close-minded <laughs> I just blind you know I didn't I didn't want to see it you know mm -hmm. and I've officially moved there like a few months after and I chose to be in a French school so I was far from my parents because where they lived uh, there was no French school there was an American school and I wanted to keep a French like education so I was there I met a boy and we were together we were five in our class can you believe that wow. a classroom of five students so my grades improved uh, but you know like this is the result but the actual like process is that I came from a French classroom with 30 students and I go to Indian, like classroom in Pondicherry uh, which is uh, with five students you're like this is a whole new change but the outcome was amazing because my grades improved because I was closer to my teachers and I was facing my own self in India also so I was not living with my parents I was living in this guest room I was doing boarding school actually and after like trimester how you, like three months you know I moved out to rent a room on my own so at 16 yeah 16 wow. 17 18 so yeah so you're already getting comfortable with like moving around by yourself yeah nice. especially by myself actually because i just had to care about me mm -hmm. and my past you know like right. just what i'm doing my past my studies Ooh, it's, kind of weird. it's nice though but yeah walk. it's like actually we can walk there. yeah we can like um i hope you guys still hear us yeah the wind <laughs> is there but we're we're definitely gonna clean that up. Yep. Um, we'll try to. <laughs> so India, yeah, I saw. I, I was never like touched or harassed in the streets, right. thankfully, which I'm really happy of because I was quite outside a lot. Mm. You know, I was. I like being on my own. I was having walk like near the beach, like uh, there was a, a path, like a road, the beach road. Yeah. Um, to music and, <laughs> and I've I, I seen poverty but I also saw so yeah, much what did like, it teach you it teach me that water is precious water is very water, precious water, like first thing that comes to mind wow that, I, I can't believe you said that yeah because we literally like I was in India we can drink water right and when I was in Europe I was telling myself are we really flushing our toilets with drinking water? Like, do people realize that, you know? Because it has become so mainstream that I'm like, well, you, every time you flush, do you know it's like drinking water? And like, some countries, people do need to get up and get these big, like, plastic jars and go to the water truck and get it and take it back. Like, do you know how heavy that is? So, like, yeah, my mom had to do this when she was younger. See? So I get it. It's like this in African countries and Asian countries. Right. I'm sure even Europe before we got all this super good system. No, but it's it's a super good thing. We just have to know that it's uh, water we can potentially drink or use for agriculture or like just clean water that is not ground or with heavy metals like like maybe there are heavy metals but not like you know even in Moscow the top water you can't drink it. Mm. So So yeah, 
yeah, like because you're traveling to many different places, are you noticing that a lot of different places don't even have the infrastructure for their clean drinking water? I, it's one of the first things I noticed actually because water is and very still, much... And still, right? Sorry? So, so like the places you travel to um, or have traveled to, like they lack the infrastructure for clean drinking water? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was in Senegal, for example, in December. Oh, wow, I want to visit Senegal. I, sure. It was my first time in Africa, Ooh. and I was so, so grateful to be there, especially for work, you know, like, right. I got, like, I got to travel there, and to the model. ticket was offered, the accommodation right. too, and it was my, my first time in Africa, and I knew that Africa was gonna resonate with me because I just like how people are happy there mm. like you know we all have problems and all but like they don't they just they're just turns outwards and they're like outside all day they play music they're like with their people like with their group of people with friends and with family and the families like in Africa are like often bigger and with, there's so much like sharing and colors and all that I knew I was gonna like it and I got there I arrived it was so so good like the food was amazing I had the best yassa chicken and like <laughs> woo, the rice the white rice was amazing and the weather was amazing I was by the you know that, like that car is like a big um, like a port, port. You know, it's mm -hmm. like yeah so that was good. I also took a ferry to go to Gore because I had one down day. So I took a little ferry to go on that little island nearby. So you're always exploring too. I am. I like so being lost. you have lost. exploration energy at heart. Do you like yeah, feeling 100%. lost in like places? I lose myself on purpose sometimes. Yeah, so like what's that technique? This is definitely a technique Whoa. of yours and I love to share it. Um, like, like on your down days when you're not modeling, what okay. are... Like, how do you get lost in these new cities or countries that you're in? Okay, so I wouldn't say I'm an impulsive person. Yeah. But sometimes I get those impulses to, like, do something with my day. Right. And yesterday, so I had this impulse, or I would say this energy surplus that got me outside <laughs> Where does... after my breakfast. Yeah. I was like, I need to, like, either walk or let me just go to, like... Williamsburg because mm -hmm. you know it's on my bucket list so I just do it I just listen to this impulse and I'm also moving my body right. so I play a podcast or I just go on walks um, not necessarily someone like I'm not waiting on someone to go somewhere I just go mm. and I stay safe of course because I'm really aware of what's going on right. um, but so far no bad experiences I'm still here and I mean I've been to India and like a lot of countries that are like seen as dangerous but like I'm strong <laughs> I'm stronger now actually I don't say I'm strong but I'm like you are strong. I've achieved knowledge and insights that I know will benefit me and that will save me from some spaces and like people you know I just I just yeah. have myself like it built my core so yeah, yeah. I think the, the more we know ourselves the more safer life gets because we know ourselves exactly <laughs> like you can't really change the outside you can't really change like what's going on outside right so when all you have is yourself I think you really need to cultivate yourself know yourself and so like this you can behave better with people you can behave better with yourself be kind to yourself um just be a better human being i guess mm -hmm. what do you think i think the more you know yourself i agree the more you know yourself the more the universe leads you to the paths and the the right environments that you need that your soul belongs in because like each yeah. human here has like a unique like little like path of their own like even though you're right next to me mm -hmm. like you're still like taking up space that my body's not taking up mm -hmm. and you're seeing like a perspective that my body's 
probably not seeing but we're sharing like this this like space too you see like er, like I, I was gonna walk that way but because you walk this way it opened up this new channel like I didn't even know that this this opening over here existed yeah so like let's go, let's go to your like that side oh yeah like, here, lead, you to lead us no no because this is perfect we saw my side now let's do your side hey so like hey. my side was just like going around the rock and like leading me back to that way like over there mm. and then it like leads me back this way oh there's also a cool architecture thing but um, yeah um thank but, you for thank oh. you for sharing all of those those things i want to like end end the video with like uh with um, a piece of advice that you have for uh, the future generations, like what we like, you're speaking. Pretend you're speaking through them right now. I think I'm Gandhi like, right now. yeah, you're Gandhi, and like, there's thousands upon millions upon billions upon the whole earth could hear you. What would you say? Try to change your perspective uh, sometimes. You don't have to do it always, but just sometimes like step out of this vessel you have and just try to just like place yourself somewhere that is like not your perspective, not her perspective or his perspective or their perspective. Just like, just take a moment to like look back and analyze the situation and be like, it's all fine. You know, it's like, life is great. Just get some gratitude get some acceptance and get some like just come out of your sights I would say like your own brain and what you see right now just be kind and accept and please believe in each other because we're such a community like this planet earth is a community and you know people who get me will get me it's just like I get you connections and like they get you too <laughs> yeah, connections like we had yesterday actually right really give me faith yeah, and that's same. why i'm happy to like step out of my apartment even if i don't feel like it right. you know it's the small things that make us feel the, the the most the outcome but i already know like when i saw you i was like mm, this person <laughs> knows like he must be connected with earth first of all and we must have a connection that can um, allow us to like have this kind of talks this yes. amazing talks we've had and we've had some amazing talks yes and, and more um, to come yeah a and, lot more to come and you also showed me uh, your way of like going around Brooklyn you showed me your favorite uh, Japanese coffee spot and I didn't know it so you also do you see like a video game map yeah you kind of expanded my map nice. <laughs> the, sh the shadow and you part too. It's like you know it's it's a it's a mutual feeling and this is why I think uh, connection with with uh, humans who make you feel good are important because they're always there to guide you in places you've never been yeah. mentally and physically yeah this is the trade guys this is the trade i've been talking about with the suitcase <laughs> but also like you know when you go to festivals when you even i mean even in my industry that we can it can seem like harsh and hectic and all that well i've met some great people mm -hmm. in this industry passionate people there is things to like take and give but also let go there is good and bad and in everything like mm. the yin and yang you know it's like not always black or white i'm a really like black or white person um but yeah there's this great area and there's new happenings so yeah thank you so much thank you thank you guys for tuning in to this video uh I'd like to open up my heart to you guys and uh yeah well we'll see you guys in the next video peace and love yeah thank you so much for listening and thank you for letting myself uh, letting me express myself and yeah thank you so much thank you mika thank can you i give you a hug yes <laughs> mm. thank you thank you peace